What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Insurance Auto Auctions here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. Let's start this video off with a 2007 GMC Yukon XL. This is pretty nice, high mileage. It shows to have like 280,000 miles on the odometer. The tires look good. So why is it here? Well. I aim to find that out in this video because for 280,000 miles, this thing honestly looks really, really good. It, at least on the outside, it looks it looks really nice. Great tires. I see a little bit of damage to the hood and a missing GMC badge. Some dents on the hood up front here, but I mean nothing major. Headlights are super clean. They look really nice. The whole truck looks really nice. Let's take a look at the interior. Wow, no way. Really? Wow, it, it looks too good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks too good. And it smells good. Nah, come on now. Something's up. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but something is up. And we're gonna find it. Even the armrest, the center console, it looks good in this. Are you serious? A few cracks in the dashboard, which is normal. In fact, most of these, this old with this many miles, the dashboard's disintegrated. There's nothing left. I mean, it is it is in pretty rough shape. But believe me when I tell you, this is not bad to, compared to some of the ones I've seen. Somebody left the ignition on to kill it. So, And then, you know, this right here, let's just take that out so that nothing happens to it. We can still access those. The hood is open. I kind of like this, guys. I do. I kind of like this. Looks like this is a two-wheel drive version, which is fine. These things are great, man. And they're not all that popular right now. You know, the, prices, the price of gas is up and everything. So, you know, these aren't really the things people are looking for right now. It's got an aftermarket expansion tank. It's got a value craft battery. And like I said, it is dead as a doornail. This thing, this thing looks really good. Really good. Um, valve covers are leaking a little bit. That's normal. Those are easy to change. Super easy to replace. Why don't we check the oil real quick? That's how you know I'm serious about it or I wouldn't be checking the oil. Oil looks good. Wow. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. These things are normally just kind of abused. Rarely do you see them get to almost 300,000 miles. Um, so that leaves me wondering about the, about the transmission. That would be my guess. Trans fluid is dark brown. I mean, it's, it's not black. I've seen worse, but brown isn't good either, guys. <laughs> Trans fluid is supposed to be pink. It goes from pink and then it kind of turns red and then it turns brown and then it turns black. So, um, I don't know, it could be okay. And I'm sure it's a, I don't know, a 4L60, because this is a 5.3, right? It is a 5.3. I know it's a 5.3, but for some reason, I always feel like I have to look, even though I know for a fact it's a 5.3. Um, two wheel drive. So it's not a hard transmission to replace. It's not an expensive transmission to replace either. Like this is something you could literally do at home in a driveway if you wanted to. Why don't we throw a jump on it and let's just see if it runs. All right, moment of truth. Time to see what this thing does. Man, these are these are decent tow vehicles, guys. People really underestimate these things. Uh, transmissions are a little weak on these, but... Yeah, fired right up. Oh, somebody made it to where you can't turn the, ste the steering wheel. Oh, it died. Oh, <laughs> well, that's because I turned the ignition off accidentally. <laughs> there we go. Whoopsie. All right, let's turn the e-brake off. We immediately are greeted with a check engine light. And I don't know how they were able to tell the mileage on this because I've got nothing for an odometer, nothing at all. Interesting, let's push, you can push the buttons and nothing comes up on the screen. So, okay, 
Battery voltage looks like it's charging. Oil pressure looks good. It's completely out of gas. Brakes feel phenomenal. Brakes feel great. This is coming apart. This needs to be replaced. <laughs> no big deal, guys. It's junkyard stuff there. Important window works. Less important window also works. Not too shabby. Let's turn on the air conditioning. And let's see if it does anything. Well, wouldn't it be great if it's got cold air as well? I, I'd buy this. Like, absolutely. Even with a 5.3. I don't have a problem with the 5.3. I prefer the 6.0 or the 6.2, obviously. But, um... I think it does. Yes. It's got cold air conditioning, guys. Wow. Right into gear. Like, right into gear. Right into reverse. And right into drive. Like, no hesitation at all. Which is far better than the one that I looked at the other day. Let's just adjust this a tad bit. Air conditioning could be a little bit colder, but I mean, it's cold. It's definitely cold. Probably just needs a little bit of a charge. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a two-wheel drive Yukon. This is nice. This is actually really nice. With, according to the sign there, almost 300,000 miles, the seat feels really comfortable. Like, it doesn't feel like this thing's been worn out at all. And then you've got a Walmart sticker, 422.23. 284 653 miles is when it was due so i'm assuming somewhere along the line this instrument cluster is intermittently working i guess in fact i can see park reverse neutral drive what if i turn up no i guess not i was trying to turn up the screen yeah, I can't see the mileage. I can't see anything on there. I don't know, guys. Why don't I pull this up real quick and let's just see what it's going for. Well, I was ready to bid on this one, guys. But the auction is not assigned yet. I, w I was ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready right now. Let this thing come up for auction because I'm putting a bid on it. This this thing's nice, man. Um, I, do have it on, I do have it on my watch list. So we'll see what happens. Um, as time progresses, but I, I do like it. I think this is decent, very decent. A little sticky on the steering wheel and the shifter. It's kind of ugh, but uh, you know, nothing that I don't think will clean up easily. This is not bad. Throw a cover over the dashboard and just pretend like none of that exists. In fact, what I would do is I'd be very careful, but I'd get some epoxy and I would push these pieces back together and just epoxy over them so that they don't break any further. And then I would throw a cover over the dashboard and just pretend like, you know, nothing happened. You know, I keep I keep coming back to this one. Um, it, I, you guys have been following along long enough. You know, I've been looking at this for months and months and months. I really want to get my hands on this one. Is it still locked? Yeah, it's it's still locked. In fact, today I just noticed the, uh, the window tint has green, blue, red sparkles in it. Oh man, I daily drive this thing. I think I'm joking. I really do want to get my hands on this. I think it's an S15 GMC Jimmy. I, I don't know. Anyway, I do I do want this. It came up for auction. It popped up and I got really excited about it. And then just like that, it was gone. <laughs> like it was going to go up for auction and then it disappeared. And it's still on my watch list as something that will eventually go up for auction so i didn't forget about it in case you guys were wondering same thing with this we're right next to it we got a little s10 and it's another one that i've been waiting for it's got the 4.3 vortec uh two-wheel drive like this is what i want i i really i really really want this one um but it too just has not come up for sale oh now here's what i need absolutely not um no, I'm good on that. Little Honda is still back there. Man, a lot of these cars are just, you know, they're just kind of sitting here, I guess, waiting for their turn to go up for auction. And I, I am also waiting because I'm looking forward to bidding on some of these things. There's that red, that red Chevy truck back there that I've really, really liked looking at. But uh, 
it's one that I decided I was not going to be interested in. And somewhere down here, I'm looking to see if there's anything new that I'm interested in. I do see some new vehicles, but I don't see any that I'm, you know, really all that interested in looking at. What I'd like to know is where that Ford Ranger went, because it was here, I don't see it. It was a green Ford Ranger that had a, a small block, like a 302. I think it was a 302, old school 302 under the hood. No way, is that a Dodge Shadow? Is that a Dodge Shadow? Oh, it's the two, oh, yes, yes. No way, man, no way, I gotta have this. I gotta have this 93 Dodge Shadow donation. Oh, it's too bad it's automatic. That's too bad it's in a, God, I was hoping this was a stick shift. I mean, okay, let me start over. I get excited, all right? I love my old school cars. I, I absolutely love my old school cars. My stepmother and my father had something similar to this way back in the day. It was a Carroll Shelby. Uh, what was it, a Dodge? Uh, I can't remember. It was not a Dodge Shadow. It was, it looked very similar to this, but it was a Carroll Shelby and it kept blowing head gaskets. I remember that more than anything else about the car. It was silver. It had the gray seats like this, but it had Carroll Shelby like embroidered in blue and red. And it was, I can't remember what it was for the life of me. It, it's killing me that I can't remember what it was. I just remember that it was a hatchback. It was a, it was a hatchback car, much smaller. Okay. When I say it looks like this, honestly, it probably didn't look anything like this. Now that I think about it, I just, I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was, but, but it was a, a Carroll Shelby Dodge something or other. So let's get back to this one. This only has 80,000 miles on it, guys. 82,000 miles. You already know. You already know this has got to come to the house because this fits my yard perfectly. You know, if there are cars that I want to collect in life, it's it's these. Uh oh, <laughs> this doesn't run. Gee, I wonder if it's got a blown head gasket. <laughs> somebody's somebody's been in here. Um, they've pulled the spark plug wires off. I'm just gonna kind of stick them back on. But yeah, that's that's not a good sign. <laughs> that's a that's a really bad sign that somebody's been in here messing around. Um, this, this could have a head gasket problem. I think it was just something that Dodges were kind of known for back in the day. Um, this has an old school distributor cap and a and a coil and all that stuff. Timing belt motor. It's definitely a possibility that timing belt's broken the oil is full and it looks very clean this somebody had to have taken such great care of this car for it to have lasted this long air conditioning was converted does the clutch work it does no way the clutch works transmissions on these were also known to fail it's got bright bright pink transmission fluid that could be a good thing it could also be a bad thing wow I, I, I haven't seen one of these. I, I can't tell you how long. Um, I can't tell you how long. And it's it's still bothering me that I can't find in my mind. I cannot figure out what kind of car that was that we had back in the day. Um, driving me absolutely crazy. Definitely one of these types of cars. You know what I mean? Um, a hatchback, Dodge, Carroll Shelby. And for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. This thing even has the books, guys. Look at this. It comes with fuses. You've got a warranty card. Oh, my gosh. The tape deck, it's all original. I couldn't let it go, guys. There it is. There it is. In 83, the Shelby Charger was introduced. <laughs> Someone must have known it would be a special car because this one was tucked away and survived with only 16,000 miles on this particular car. It looked very similar to this one. I mean, it, it was almost identical, just the paint scheme was different. So it was a, uh, it was a, it was a Shelby Charger. It, it was such a cool car. I wish I could find another one. I'd love to have it. Let me pull this one up real quick. I'm curious to see if this one's going up for auction. Well, I put a jump on it. Um, it's listed as stationary. 
I don't think that just putting the plug wires back on is going to make it run. Something was obviously wrong with this car. I hear a fuel pump. My first thought was that it sat. Oh. Let's put it in park. God, this thing brings back so many memories. I can't tell you how many of these I had back in the day. And uh, looks like it was getting serviced regularly. Wow. Let's see if it'll run. All right. Oh, it, it tries. That doesn't sound healthy though. Yeah, it tries to run, but uh-uh. Yeah, it's not cranking in a healthy manner at all. So it could be fuel related. It could be low compression. I'm, I think I'd put money on low compression. Wow, and look at the old keys. Well, I didn't expect it was gonna run, guys, but definitely helps to put the, uh, to put the spark plugs back where they belong, you know, the spark plug wires. Let's take a look at the trunk. What is this? There's a paper on the floor here. Oh, it doesn't say anything. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't need this, but I do want it. The paint on the hatch here is kind of rough. It does have working, uh, well, sort of working shocks. Not much room back there at all, guys. I don't know. Man, I like the car. It brings back a lot of memories. A whole lot of memories. And honestly, overall, it looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, definitely got a mechanical issue going on. Could be fuel related. It could be spark. It's really hard to tell. Um, the fuel injection on these things is kind of, you know, eh, it's iffy. Looks like it's got a relatively new belt on the air conditioning. Makes me wonder if anybody's ever changed the timing belt because that could also be an issue. If that timing belt slipped, well, I mean, obviously it's out of time. Probably a non-interference engine, but honestly, I don't know. I really, I don't know. I don't remember. It has been a long time since I've seen one of these to even think about whether it's a, an interference engine or not. I'm going to keep my eyes on this car, you know, maybe, I don't know. May, maybe if it comes up for auction soon, I'd take a look at it. Maybe not. It's hard to say. You got a big ding in the front bumper there. That's probably from being hauled around and everything, which is kind of a shame. The body of this car looks really good with the exception of that and a little bit of paint peel on the hatchback. All right, let's continue looking around. Let's see if we can find anything else. I just, I don't know why. I, I, I kind of share my... my my obsession with 90, 90s cars with uh, with Big Al from Big Al's Bike and Auto. Uh, if you guys don't know him, you should definitely go check him out. He is the gentleman that took me in when I had COVID. I was real sick, man. Real, real sick. He took me and Monkey Wrench Mike in, gave us a place to stay, and that was a big deal, man. Like, not a lot of people would have said, would have welcomed us into their home um, knowing that I was sick with the vid. So a uh, big shout out to uh, Big Al's Bike and Auto for helping us out. But anyway, go check him out because he's into those 90s cars just like I am, man. If I find anything 90s, I'm going to be looking at it. Primarily American cars, but occasionally I'll look at some Hondas. Like something like this. One of these old Blazers, you know, probably like a 92. This is something I'd be interested in if it wasn't so rough. You know, it's a two-door. It's got some rust. It's got bad tires. The gas tank is sitting in the front seat. Yeah, this is this is a little more than I'd be wanting to mess with, truthfully. That's not the gas tank. That's like a skid plate or something. 241,000 miles. If you pop the hood on this, it's probably got a... I can't remember some of these, depending on the year. But they had a... They started out with like a 2.8 liter V6, and they ended up with a 4.3. I don't know what year this is, though. And I don't see a sticker on the door. 
So let's go ahead and just pop the hood real quick. We'll take a quick look. Wow, that Impala's got some, that's got some big wheels, man. Too big for my taste, but anyway. Come on. Oh, good Lord. Oh, wow. Well, I can already see somebody was working on it. Um, some of you old school guys will know exactly what this is. I'm not going to tell you what it is or where it goes, but uh, here, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a hint. It goes at the back of the motor, dead in the center. That way you guys know that I know what I'm talking about. Now, you comment below if you know what this is. These used to go bad. <laughs> used to carry these. See the heat sink compound on the bottom? Yeah, uh, these things, you, used to, you'd carry two or three of them around with you, man, because they went bad so often. Um, this thing's got a few pieces missing. Someone was tearing into this, so... This is not one. This is not one I'm interested in tackling. But before we move on, take a look at this Impala and those wheels, man. Those are, uh, <laughs> oh lord, those are crazy. Azera, and can we even see the tire size? Everything is written so small. They're 255, 30, ZR, 24, 24 inch tires and wheels on an Impala. Uh, no. <laughs> to each their own though, right? To each their own. Just for me, no. Oh man. Guys, hold on. Oh, I won't. <laughs> I gotta stop. They gotta stop. And there's my, there's my Ranger. There's my Ranger right behind the van. Oh, I want this van. Right behind the van is the Ranger that I'm waiting for them to, to put up for sale. Is this the BMW that I was looking at the other day? I think it is. No, this is a 328. Okay, focus, Ranger. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm finding so many good things out here that I can't, I can't contain my excitement. Let me set my bag down. Let's take a look at this, a non-runner 1983 Ford Econoline. Aside from some clear coat peel right here and right here, and a little bit there, and a lot up top. Wow, man, these things were these things were king of the road back in the days, right? You remember these and the big old Chevys? Ah, these things were phenomenal. Dual tanks, white letter tires. You got the big spare tire on the back, the ladder going up to the top. It's locked. Tow hitch because everybody was towing something. It's not wrecked. I'd be willing to bet this thing has probably been sitting for a long time. And the reason it doesn't run is because the fuel system is gummed up. I'd almost put money on it. Let's see what the interior looks like. Oh, it smells old. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a smell. That's a smell. So, Lorraine Motor Coach. Look at this. There used to be a table here, um, or something. Oh, it's a cup holder that goes into the, I guess it sits into the floor. Yeah, this has been sitting a long time. I can see the debris all up in the windows there. They did wash it. I mean, they cleaned it up pretty good, but there's a cigarette from, you know, 1985, probably sitting there. Look at this, guys. Does this not bring back memories? Come on. You guys are as old as me. I know it. Some of you probably even older. God, the smell, you just, I guarantee you this runs. I, I, would, I would put money on it that this runs um, with fresh gas, uh, not before then. Let's go uh, take a peek on this side. Let's check out these, uh, these fuel tanks. Yeah, a little dirty, but let's see, let's take a, that's that's rotten. That's absolutely rotten. It smells like the, the Crown Vic. Let's try this one. All right, let's do it. Let's do it this way. Um, that's got an interesting smell. It smells. It smells better than that one by a long shot. It almost smells like there's fresh gas in there. But 
like maybe the tank wasn't actually cleaned. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's got fresh gas mixed with some, uh, some old gas. I'd be curious how the roof looks. Um, I definitely see some rust. Let me get you guys up here just a little bit more. There you go. This, this stick extends. This will help me as well so I can see how bad this roof is. I mean, I can see a lot of peeling up here, but I can't get that high to the roof. And if you think I'm climbing that ladder, that's not gonna happen. So you guys can look at it with me and I don't know. I definitely wanna pop the hood and uh, oops, I hit the antenna. Definitely wanna pop the hood on this. It's not already popped. Oh, it's kinda. No, it's not. Yeah, let me pop the hood real quick and uh, let's see if we can get this thing to do anything. Well, I put the booster pack on it. My booster pack is pretty well dead from all the work it's put in today. It does have oil, it looks pretty dark, but it's got oil, it's in the safe zone. Um, I also found that some of the wiring under the dash looks a little questionable. So that'll be fine. If you get in there, you can kind of see there's a uh, an Edelbrock carburetor sitting on there. Looks like a, a relatively recent carburetor. So it almost makes me think that somebody was trying to get this running. The fuel tank is already switched over to the front, which I told you smells better than the rear. So I think somebody was working on this, trying to get it going. Um, obviously they gave up. I'm gonna give it a little break. Like I said, my booster pack is on its last legs, man. Um, there's definitely some wiring going on down there. Uh, it shows it's got no gas. And my booster pack just died. <sighs> that sucks. Look at this, some, some Marlboros. I wonder what the year is on this. Oklahoma, does it say? tax stamp I don't see a date on this I don't know guys I don't know let's try it one more time nah booster pack is shot dang it and what is this a neutron alarm on alarm off run you got all your lights I don't know man <laughs> Do I need this? No, I don't. I don't need this. Do I want it? Yeah, I do. I, I, <laughs> I do. I don't know why, but I do. This is so cool. This is in, in my, whoops, don't step on those. Those are, those don't feel very supportive anymore. Yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to throw a bit on this. Um, this one's gonna be fun but I'll bet money we can get this going. I know we can, I know we can. Unfortunately, I just killed my booster pack. Um, this has juice? That battery's not dead? No way. Well, that battery is dead. It says it's got 11.5 volts in it. Um, but yeah, I just killed my booster pack. So I probably cannot start anything else out here today. So that sucks. But at least we know that this thing cranks over. The hood shuts. Don't think for a minute that I wouldn't drive this, guys. If we can get it running, if I can win it. First, I got to win it. Then we got to get it running. Yeah, you can bet money. I'm going to drive this thing. Guys, I, I know better. <laughs> I know better, but I... I got to, man. I don't know what, 500 bucks. Let's just let's just see what happens. Are we winning it? We're winning it for $275. Yeah, it's listed as a charity donation, stationary, non-runner, obviously clean title. 5.8 liter. Well, there it is. We're, we're winning another one. I really should stop. I, I really, really should. I just, I can't help it. I see these old things and I know where they're headed. You know, don't think for a minute 
that people are buying these things up and putting them back on the road because most likely they're not. These old 80s and 90s vehicles, they're going straight to a scrapyard, man. Nobody wants these things. You know, I do. Big Al does. There's a few of us out there, specialty motor cars. He loves these things too. He's more, uh, he's more into the, uh, the Panther platform type of stuff. You know, the, uh, the Mercury Grand Marquis, the Crown Victorias. He's got a Cadillac or two here and there. He likes his Lincoln Town cars and things of that nature. Um, but still, it's nice to see that there are people out here still rescuing these old forgotten cars. Because let's be honest, as much as I love my 80s and 90s American cars, guys, they weren't very good. I'll be the I'll be the first to admit that they were not very good cars, um, but it, it, that doesn't matter. I, I can't help but love them just because that's what I grew up seeing. That's what was around when I was a kid, and you know, <laughs> I remember seeing these. Something as simple as a Dodge Shadow going down the road, going, "Man, I like that. It's a nice looking car." You know, to most people, yeah, probably not, but to me, I love the Dodge Shadow. I've also always loved the Chevy Astro. Why this one is sitting here with no windshield is beyond me. Oh, the whole side's rusted, it's wrecked. Yeah, see, something like that, I, I, I can walk past that. I'm not interested in that. But if I can find something that looks like it's worth saving, I absolutely want to save it. I want to put it back on the road and bring it back to life. Look another charity. See what I mean? You've got to really go through these cars, guys. It takes me hours, hours and hours to walk through this yard to find the occasional vehicle that's like, man, I love this. I do like this one. The paint is really bad, but that's no big deal. I mean, what's a paint job, you know? I've sent these down to Mako before, and they make these things look brand new. This is a 97 Chevy 1500 says it's a non-runner with 99,000 miles on the odometer. I'd find that difficult to believe, uh, unless it's been sitting, uh, which tends to be the case with these uh, charity cars. A lot of these have just been sitting for, yeah, look at this. This is all like mold and stuff that's been growing under here. Yeah, this thing's, this thing's sat for a long time. So probably a very gummed up fuel system. That's a shame. I've been seeing a lot of these things coming up through the auction lately, guys. Quite a few of them. Yeah, 99,828 miles on the odometer. Oh, that smell. It's, it's old. It smells old. It's even got the old school Delco tape deck. Would you look at that? I am in heaven right now, guys. This, this is my, this is my heaven. Honest to God, it is. Give me a bunch of broken old American cars, and uh, yeah, I'll be happy. Let's take a whiff here. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yep. That's that is very rotten. It looks like somebody put tires on this thing right before it got parked. Look at these tires. I mean, they're all almost flat. They're probably old as dirt. Date code, October of 2015. These tires are almost 10 years old. So that tells you something. Somebody put brand new tires on it. They still have the nipples on it, guys. They still have the nipples. 10 of 15. That was eight years ago. Someone put tires on it and then it got parked. Why? That's the question. Why would somebody spend the kind of money to put these nice tires on here? And it's a nice truck. Honestly, the body looks pretty good. Aside from a dented tailgate, the rest of the body looks... It's its pretty sharp, man. You throw a clean paint job on this? Yeah. Oh, the hood. Oh, hail damage. I didn't see that. Significant hail damage on the hood. The battery is from 2016. So we know that it got tires in 2015. It got a battery in 2016. And then something happened, and it ended up parked. There's mouse turds in that little cubby hole there, so you've definitely had rodents living in here. Let's check the oil. It's pretty dark. That oil is, that's pretty dark. This thing's gonna need, this thing's gonna need some work. I'm wondering if it was a transmission problem, maybe. Ooh. 
Oh no, that's not good. Spider webs under the hood too. <sighs> well, as much as I like this one, this one's got a little more going on than I want to mess with, guys. This one's a lot, you know. I mean, yeah, it, it could be done, but I just I gotta I gotta I gotta hunch. The trans went out on this. I really do. That transmission looks really bad. That's probably why it was parked, and then it just you know sat until it ended up going to charity. So you got a completely rotted out fuel system, most likely a transmission that doesn't work, um, and a lot of hail damage. It's just it's, it's just a bad combination, guys. So I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip that one. That's hard to do. That's really hard to do because. I know as well as most of you that that thing is headed straight for a scrapyard. Oh my goodness, another blazer. What is going on here today? It doesn't run, of course. I gotta stop. I'm gonna get in so deep. I'm gonna have so many of these old vehicles sitting at my house. 1987 blazer, four by four. Does this have the digital gauges? It doesn't. Dang it, man. I love the digital gauges. You just don't find them with digital gauges anymore. I mean, these gauges are super cool, too. I always like these as well. Boy, it smells. They just all smell old. And look, you got the Tasmanian Devil <laughs> for the headline. It's actually kind of cool. I like that. I like that. Whoever did that, that's awesome, man. 185,000 miles on the odometer. Of course, it's dead as a doornail, and I can't start it because I'm certain we can try, we can give my booster pack a, a shot, but I guarantee you my booster pack is done. There's that engine I was talking about earlier, that old school 2.8 liter V6. Oh, I'm very familiar with these. They put these in the old Camaros too. I had a Camaro with a manual transmission and this 2.8 liter V6. I've had many, many, many Blazers with this same 2.8 liter V6. I could work on these in my sleep, guys. Honest to God, like I, I know this vehicle in and out. I could absolutely work on something like this in my sleep. So the battery has a date code of C2022, a maybe, I don't know, C22? Is that 2022? I, I have no idea. Dura Power, never heard of it. I don't know what brand that is, but I'm going to quickly throw a jump on it. We're gonna see if it'll do anything. What do you think, transmission? Check. <laughs> Let's check the transmission. Let's just be honest. Transmissions weren't good back in these days. I don't think anybody made a really good transmission. That actually does not look bad. I mean, it's not fresh, but that doesn't look bad. That's probably all right. My question is, why is this thing sitting here? Let's check the oil. That's kind of a bear to get to, but let's go ahead and check it real quick. Oh, wow. That's way, way too much oil. That's not good. The full mark is about halfway down from where the oil is actually full at. So, what do you think, head gasket? Maybe it's got it's got water in the oil. I got a feeling this one ain't gonna do anything. And besides that, like I said, my booster pack is so dead, guys. Uh, it'll be nothing short of a miracle if this thing will even attempt to do anything at all. I hate side post batteries. Well, I turn on the booster pack and things have come to life. That's more than I was expecting. Um, real quick, <laughs> let's take a, let's take a, oh yes. Oh yeah. Interesting, that doesn't smell bad. I mean, it looks like this hasn't been opened in years, but that doesn't smell bad. So maybe somebody's already been in there messing around. Let's turn this off. I'm being very gentle with my booster pack. I don't want to crank it for long because once it dies, it's over. You know what I mean? We, we got no more juice. It's already dead. Yeah, it's already done. Dang it, this is an S10 Tahoe. 
The crazy thing about this one too, it's also got new tires. Somebody put new tires on this. These are Goodyear Viva 2s, which means they can't be that old, guys. The date code, oh wow. Have Viva 2s really been around that long? 21 of 12? No way. I thought Viva 2s were newer than that. The date code is 2112. So, yeah, those tires are pretty old, and they've got no miles on them. Let's check these back here. See, this is a different tire, completely different. This is a Nepriz all-terrain. That does not look like an all-terrain tire, guys. That's a street tire. Anyway, the date code on this one, it's so old, it's an 8EEJ, if that even makes sense to anybody. This is pretty rough, guys. Uh... There's another wheel back there. Does it have a uh, missing rim? No. Yeah, it does. Up there, I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah. Those are dry rotted beyond belief. There's nothing left of this tire. Wow. Yeah, these tires are not going to go far. <laughs> Lots of hail damage. You know what I think? And that tire is completely... There's nothing left of that. I think this right here came from the same place that these other ones came from because they're all here at the same time. You know, that Ford van that we were looking at that I'm actually winning, I bet this was at the same property. It's got the same hail damage and, you know, the same kind of vintage, I would say. And then before that, maybe that uh, that Chevy, that Chevy uh, truck that we just looked at, maybe that also came from here. I'm betting somebody, you know, got older, maybe passed away and they had to clean off the property and uh these are what came from it what do you think guys is this something <laughs> i don't know man you know uh, i mean immediately before anything it needs tires we have no idea about the fuel system on this um could be gummed up somebody may have already gone into it what do you guys think drop a comment down below so this will give you an idea of what we're looking at here this one this one is up for sale. It's got no bids on it, which doesn't surprise me, but they have a buy it now, $775. That's that's not gonna happen. Like, I'll put a pre-bid on this one, but it's gonna be like 250 bucks. You know what I mean? And and that's it. Like, that, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm sure we're, yeah, easily winning it for $25. I don't think anybody's gonna outbid me. I don't need this. Part of me doesn't even want it, but I am kind of curious to see if we can get it running because if we can, I want to throw some cheap tires on it and drive it. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. I've bid on a lot of cars this week and I'm still winning the Roush. In fact, that auction starts at about 40 minutes. The 427R, I'm still winning that one for $10,600. I'm winning like five cars here at this auction as well. Obviously, I'm moving cars out, I'm selling vehicles, and I'm bringing more in. That's how this works. I got to get rid of some so I can bring more content to entertain you guys. And let's be honest, I enjoy playing with these cars. I love playing with these cars. Yes, it's work, and yes, it's a job, but at least it's something I really enjoy doing, and you guys seem to enjoy watching. So I've shown you everything that I'm bidding on at IAA. You know what I'm bidding on at Copart. Let's just see what happens as all of these auctions come to pass. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy the videos. Drop your comments down below and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.